I get questions all the time about how to edit text in Persona games. For a long time I didn't have a satisfactory answer. That's because Atlas uses their own scripting format for their games. In the final product, these scripts get compiled into a complex binary format called BF. BF handles a lot of the game's logic, but often embedded within them is another format called BMD, which is used strictly for text formatting. So the problem was that even if we edit the text in the BMD, it couldn't exceed the size of the original due to offsets in the BF. That's when TGE stepped up to the plate and developed the Atlas Script Compiler. This program can convert to and from BF files using a unique scripting language called FlowScript. From extensive research of these binaries, he was able to reconstruct how the original Atlas scripts would have worked. This program can also convert BMD files to a format dubbed Message Script, which you can edit freely and then recompile back into the BF script it came from. You can now not only extract, edit, and repack dialogue, but the game's scripting as well. BF is utilized for several different purposes such as enemy AI, setting up events, checking and toggling flags, so it's very useful for mods that aim to change the game at its core. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use the script compiler and some basic things you can do with custom text and scripts. Anybody should have no problems doing simple text edits, but I'd recommend a little bit of programming experience if you want to get into scripting. I'll be starting things off with Persona 5 simply because it's the easiest to work with, but more on that later. If you recall my video about the mod menu, it was made entirely using custom scripts. In the field folder of the PS3 CPK, you'll find fieldpack.pack. Let's copy that to a folder where we can work with it. This file and other files like them can be opened with Amicidia. And it contains a BF file called field.bf. I like testing with this one because it loads automatically in almost every field in the game. So I've extracted this field BF to the folder that we're working in. Let's also download and extract the latest version of the Atlas script compiler. If you were to try to simply run it, it would show you all the commands that you can use. It's a good idea to read and understand how to use these. For instance, you need to provide an input path to a file. So in order to do that, you can hold shift, press right click, and choose open command window here. Or to do the same thing, just type cmd and then enter up here. So once you have that, you can just put the name of the exe, and then the input, which will be our field.bf file. Now, if that's all you do, notice how it says no compilation, decompilation, or disassemble instructions given. That's because we also have to tell it to decompile this file, and we can do that by simply adding decompile. There's many vital differences between BF formats from different games. Let's also put library p5 in order to let the compiler know that we're using p5's functions, and encoding p5 to let it know that we're using p5's text encoding. At this point, the decompiler should generate some flow and message files from the BF, which we can open with any text editor. I recommend using Notepad++ and just dragging them in there. Now before we do anything, let's open the field.bf.flow and go up to Language, choose C, and then choose any of the C languages. This will give us some syntax highlighting which will make this much easier on the eyes to read. And at the top you'll see an import statement. This tells the compiler to look for other files in the same folder to compile into this one when it's done. Let's add a new statement and call it test.flow. 
Now when you compile this flow file back into a BF, it'll look for a file called test.flow as well. So let's add a new text document to this folder and name it test.flow. Let's open that with Notepad++ as well. Don't forget to set the language again. And now in this file we can add another import statement, and this time we'll call it test.message. And once again let's make that file as well. So now when you compile field.bf.flow back into a BF, It'll look for test.bf.message, which contains all of the text strings in the BF. And when it compiles, it'll also include test.flow, which includes test.message, so that'll get compiled into it as well. Now let's talk about a few other things in the flow. We have script level variable definitions, and then you have the procedures such as field square menu which opens the group chat, field r1 menu, field start menu which handles the save menu. So now you can pretty much see how I was able to hijack the square menu procedure in order to use our mod menu. You can put two forward slashes in front of a line in order to comment it out, so that way the compiler will pretty much ignore it or you can just remove it entirely. Let's make our own procedure, and let's name it something like message test. And now in our new test.flow, let's put void message test. And for the very first thing that I'm going to demonstrate, let's have it be something simple like opening and closing a text window. Now you can reference other flow scripts dumped from the game to see how the game handles these functions. For instance, if you look at the start menu, you see that they use message window display, message mind, and then message window close. Let's copy that and put it in our own procedure. And now let's consider how to use it. You'll notice that the parentheses are empty for message window display and message window close. That's because they don't take any parameters. However, Message mind takes two parameters. If you look at the link in the description, you can see a list of all the functions in the game, and you can look them up. So, for instance, message mind takes two integer values. We can just leave the second one as zero, but the first one is the message index, and we know that because of how it was used in this context. For instance, the first integer here is 20. Now if you look in the field.bf.message file, the 20th message starts with mind and says now isn't the time for that. So while you could reference these by numbers, in the flow script you can also reference them by name. So putting mind and g here would be the same thing as putting 20. Now in our test.message, let's make our own example. So let's do opening and closing brackets, and inside of them, message, and then the name of the message, test message. This tells the compiler that we have a message and its name is test message, so if we were to reference it from test.flow, when the game runs this code, it'll show us whatever we put in the test message in a thought bubble. Now if you look at these, you can see for yourself how to format these messages. What's most important is that you put an N inside brackets for a new line, you put W for wait for user input, and then E for end. The S at the beginning for start is optional, you can include that or not. So for example, we can put this is a test message, and then N for new line. These color 9 words are red, color zero, wait, and then end. So now this is pretty much good enough to go ahead and compile. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's just press the up key on the keyboard. And instead of decompile, we're going to compile. 
we're going to be compiling field.bf.flow and you'll notice that you have to actually specify a flow script file format so the out format for Persona 5's flow scripts would be v3be so let's also include that right before library after compile just out format v3be now you'll notice I just got an error it says unknown tag with ID color 0 and then shows you what line number the error is it's line 3 character 26 here's line 3 you can count up to 26 so I just forgot to put a space between color and 0 like I did with this so now I'm just gonna save that again I'm gonna press up and I'm gonna try to compile again this time it compiled successfully so you'll notice that you now have a field.bf.flow.bf which is just our brand new field.bf you'll notice that the file size is higher because it includes the new stuff that we added and all you have to do is right click the field.bf in the field pack with Ambicedia and replace it with our new one and hit save now if you haven't seen our video about the mod compendium which makes it a lot easier to create mods and organize them you should go check that out now but let's just make a new mod for this test script I'm going to open the directory it's in so this goes in field and then field pack now I'm just going to build this mod and I'm going to test it out alright so now when I press square the thought bubble comes up it says this is a test message these words are red just like how we formatted it and now this happens every single time that we press square okay so let's say that instead of message mind we just used message and in our test message we also include a speaker name so in brackets after test message you could put something like Yosuke Hanamura and now at the beginning of the line if you put BUP 0 to 100 0, 0, this will use the bust up file from the PS3 CPK to 100 so you'll notice that it didn't have the lip flapping animation and I don't actually know how this function works or what these values mean but you can copy this from another message file that uses bust ups and it just goes right after the bust up and that plays the animation so let's say that now you wanted to add some branching dialogue options well let's go back to our test.flow and before we open the window let's initialize an integer value let's name it option and let's set that equal to a selection now a selection just takes one integer value and once again that's the index of the message so actually let's do this right after the test message shows up and let's name this one test select and this time in brackets instead of putting message let's just put cell for select test select and each of the options are just separated by a new line ending with an E so option 1 option 2 option 3 if you use select while the message box is still open it'll use like the message box style of selection and you'll see that in a second if we were to compile this just like this you'll see that now we have that lip flapping animation 
and at the end of this message we get to select an option. Now the options don't do anything yet since we haven't done anything with that integer that we initialized yet. But that's the next step. So there's a couple different ways that you can handle this input. One way would be to use an if statement. So if option equals zero, then do what's ever in the brackets. And then for the other option you can do else. So zero is actually the first value, so one would be the second option in the list. If you wanted option two and three to do different things, then you can actually turn this else into an else if, and then specify another condition, and then do an else to cover all the rest. This is fine if you just have like two or three options, but if you had more, then I would suggest using a switch statement instead. And a switch statement would look like this. Each case would represent the number of the option that you picked. And then it would do whatever is under that case until it hits break. And then it would end the switch statement. So let's have each option do something different so that we can demonstrate this working. Let's maybe have the first option give you a persona, have the second one give you 50 yen, maybe the third one can give you 99 somas, fourth one will warp you to the cafe, and the fifth one will change your size. These are all things that you're capable of doing, for example, with custom scripts. I'm sure there's many more possibilities I haven't even thought of. And a good way to get inspired would be to look through a dump of all the scripts in the game, and just see how they use the different variables and how the functions interact with each other. Fortunately, many of them have pretty descriptive names in the case of P5, so you'd be able to kind of assume what they're doing. For our first one, we're going to want to add a persona to the main character's stock. So if we search add persona, you'll see that there is a function for add persona stock, and you can pretty much assume what that means, and it takes one integer and that's likely the persona's ID. So let's go ahead and use that in our test.flow for case 0. And since we want Jack Frost, let's look up his ID. Looks like it's just 5. Alright, and now for the yen. Let's search for the money function. You'll see that there's several different money functions and they all kind of work together. So let's search for one in our script dump and see how the game uses it normally. So it looks like it calls the global money panel, changes how much money you have, and then deletes the money panel. So let's just go ahead and reuse some of this code. You can see that it takes two parameters separated by this comma. And in this case, it was taking money away, so they multiplied it by negative one. But if it's a positive number, I assume this is just how much money it adds. So let's go ahead and just add 50 to this. Now for case number two, we'll have to figure out how to add an item. So this one's a bit more complicated since it has several functions working in tandem with each other. We have to figure out the type of the item and the item ID and then specify the amount. A soma is a consumable, so it would use this type. And now we have to look for the item ID. Which in this case is 24. And 
then the amount will be 99. Now for this one, we're going to be calling the cafe field. Here's a function for call field that takes four parameters. And let's go ahead and see how they use it. It seems that the last two are optional since they can sometimes be left as zero, so... Since I already know the cafe is field 3, 2, I'm just going to put 3, 2, 0, 0. And finally for the model scale we're going to use field model set scale. And this one takes an integer and a float. And the integer, if you search for examples of this being used, is usually derived from a resource handle. So if we wanted to change the player model size, we would need to use the player's resource handle, which fortunately there's a function that you can use to get it. And then the scale is a float. Now floats are different from integers because they can be decimals. So we can set it to something like 7.3 and with that we should be all set to go. Let's try and compile again. It compiled successfully. And now let's do one final test in the game to demonstrate the new menu that we made. There's still several functions that we haven't documented how to use yet, so any help we can get with researching them and testing them out would be greatly appreciated. And you can join in on that collaboration at our Discord server, which is linked in the description. I hope you have fun experimenting with all the possibilities that this can unlock. Now the reason I suggest starting with P5 as opposed to P3 or P4 is that, like I mentioned earlier, it's much easier because we actually have descriptive function names for P5 already dumped from the game. P3 and P4 don't have any leftover function names left in the code, so you pretty much have to completely guess what each function is and what it does. For instance, here's the field.bf from Persona 4. Neither the variables or the functions have any descriptive names, but at the very least we do have the function names to go off of. So making scripting mods for Persona 4 will just require a lot more persistence. I'll just show a quick example of how to recompile Persona 4 BF. You'll see that to decompile this this time I use library P4 and encoding P4. Now we're going to have to change the out format to V1. And there you have it. To make things easier on yourself, you can also just use the GUI. Copy it to your compiler folder, the same place that the EXE is in. Run it. Select the game that the scripts are for. And then just drag it onto the window, just like it says here, and it'll decompile automatically.